Now, voters in Guinea go to the polls Sunday to return the country to civilian rule, months after the military took power in a coup. VOA's Rebecca Wood has more. More than 20 candidates are campaigning to become Guinea's new president and restore constitutional order in a country that has been run by soldiers since the December 2008 death of longtime leader Lansana Conte. General Sekuba Konete agreed to this vote as part of a regional power-sharing agreement in which all soldiers and members of the transitional government are blocked from standing as candidates. Voter optimism in Conakry is tempered by the challenges ahead for a new government. There is truly a hope regarding these elections, hope primarily regarding this democracy that people dream about. But what will we do with this democracy afterwards? Will we be a modern state, a state where people and their dignity will be respected? That is only achieved by putting in place true Republican institutions that can guarantee a number of things. Guinea's military came under increasing international pressure for a quick return to civilian rule after soldiers killed more than 150 protesters last September. Family and friends of those who were killed or raped formed an association known as the Victims of September 28th. Our priority is not the elections. These victims are suffering a lot. It is not the elections. Our first priority is to get medical help. Because, for example, there are victims who have had amputations. There are women who are suffering a lot psychologically because they were rejected by their husbands. And victims who are now at home today because hospitals do not want to treat them. Guinea's transitional government is working to improve national reconciliation with the new constitution before the vote. If the president respects the constitution and the international accords, I'm sure the elections are the best way to achieve true national reconciliation. Now we're joined, by we're joined in our studio by VOA West Africa correspondent Scott Stearns for a preview of Sunday's vote. And of course, Scott Stearns has really covered this uh, developments in Guinea Conakry so extensively over the time. And now to talk about it, Scott, what do you think ahead of um, Sunday's elections is going to happen, especially after so much turbulence in Guinea? Turnout uh, in Conakry is expected to be quite high. Uh, voters will, Guineans will also be voting in Europe, uh, here in Washington in Senegal and Sierra Leone, and including uh, some other countries in West Africa where there are large populations of Guineans. What we're not expecting on Sunday is to have a clear winner. With so many candidates, uh, I think the most likely outcome is that there'll be a second round of voting on July 18th. Uh, the goal, of course, in this first round is to have uh, a free and fair election uh, and to have that uh, vote held in an orderly manner. So far, uh, international monitors who, who've been there for the last month believe that everything is in place and uh, hopefully the vote Sunday will come off well. No, I think uh, from the report there are about 20 candidates who are expected to contest in these elections. We know that the acting president right now, Sakuba Konate, is not running and, and nor any of the other military of officials who have been so prominent in Guinea's life over, over the time. What do you think will be the role of the military during that period? Uh, the role for the military in this election is simply to help provide security and, and through General uh, Sakuba Konate's leadership they will not be actively involved. I, I think what we have to remember is how much has changed in Guinea uh, since the shooting of Captain Musa Dadis Kamara and his being removed from the scene. As we heard in that report the, uh, the violence of September 28th was breaking up a protest against what was suspected to be uh, Captain Kamara's presidential candidacy. It would be very easy to imagine him running for president now, having organized some elections. The opposition would have boycotted that vote. He likely would have been elected. And nothing good uh, will have come from that. We've come, there have been so many changes, and Guinea has moved so far, I think, now beyond Captain Kamara to be able to have this vote in which the military will not be involved. So you doubt that there will be any members of um, the military who are partial to Mr. Kamara who would want to maybe spoil the elections this time? Captain Kamara does still have supporters uh, within the military, and there is concern expressed by the civilian Prime Minister Jean-Marie Doré uh, that some of those supporters may try to disrupt 
Sunday's vote. Uh, the military under General Konate has arrested uh, several uh, senior officers who, who he believes uh, support Captain Kamara. So yes, uh, there, is, there is that threat. Uh, there's also concern about how uh, members of his ethnic group from the Forestria region, the, the small minority, will react to, uh, to the outcome of the vote. There are people who believe that Captain Kamara uh, should be a candidate. So uh, he's, he, his presence is still felt in this vote, but of course he's still in Ouagadougou uh, recovering from uh, his injuries. Now, you know, just uh, picking up on one of the points raised by um, one of the people interviewed in this story about really what will this change bring for the citizens of Guinea? Will there be respect for human rights, etc.? What do you think? Yeah, those challenges are huge because you have to remember we're not only trying to end 18 months of military rule in Guinea. Uh, Guinea is also having to recover from the long and ruinous rule of Lansana Conte, uh, during which uh, there was a culture of impunity, by security forces, so okay. the, the new government has, has a great deal to overcome. Scott Stearns, thank you so much for your invaluable information on this.